Right. Good afternoon. Um, my name is William Riley. I work for Renaissance Electronics and I'm also a committer on the CDT project. Um, here today to talk uh, briefly about how Renaissance built our IGE for embedded software on Eclipse and CDT and also the other Eclipse projects we used and why Eclipse was a good platform for building the IDE. So just briefly, uh, who are Renesas? Um, some of you may have heard of us, uh, certainly some of the automotive guys that may be in the room. Um, for everyone else, um, Renesas are a global, one of the world's largest semiconductor uh, suppliers. Um, originally formed by the merger of Hitachi, NEC, and Mitsubishi semiconductor divisions. Um, we have products in automotive, industrial, Internet of Things, home electronics, et cetera, et cetera. If you want a microcontroller or SOC, we supply it. Um, main headquarters are in Japan, and we have about 20,000 employees worldwide. So uh, let's go back to 2009, at the start of the journey today. Um, at that point, Renesas had two main IDEs the High Performance Embedded Workbench, which we call Hue, uh, which supported the RX family of devices, and CubeSuite, uh, which supported the R78 family of devices. Uh, we also had an Eclipse-based IDE, which a third party developed for us, uh, which again supported just the RX family of devices. Obviously, at this point, we have three IDEs, each of which only support a limited subset of our um, portfolio of devices. So, we already we needed a new IDE that supported everything. We were also at this point getting requests from customers for an Eclipse-based IDE um, because they were encountering times when they needed to use an Eclipse-based IDE. So let's we'll start by just defining the basic requirements for an IDE. Um, you want a project system and file management of some kind so that you can control what goes into your software and you can separate it so you don't just have to have, to yeah, don't have, to have all of it in just one file. Uh, you obviously need a code editor, um, but you want more than just a text box to put code in. You want syntax highlighting, code completion, um, other enhancements. Uh, build integration, um, not just being able to hit build and the code builds. You want, certainly for embedded, you want the ability to view and edit the build options that are being used. Um, you want error parsing, so when your code doesn't compile, you're not having to hunt through a large log to find out why. The errors will get pulled out and displayed in the source code or in another easy to find place. And you want debugging, um, not just stop and go. Uh, you want the ability to set breakpoints so you can control where your program stops. Uh, you want to be able to look at variables in memory to see what the state of the program is. And in uh, embedded, being able to view disassembly is important. So you can see the instructions the CPU is actually executing. Now, when we were looking at what was available in Eclipse, the Eclipse C, C++ development tools, CDT, provided all of the basic functionality we needed with either no effort on our part or very little effort. So we already had GDB ports for our architectures because we had a GCC toolchain. Um, so all we needed here was a GDB server which could interface from the GDB to our hardware debuggers. Um, as the GDB server only has to do some low level commands, it doesn't need to be able to decode all the symbol information, it doesn't need to be able to expand expressions, it just needs to be able to control the um, target CPU, uh, it doesn't take that much effort to write. So we were able to put two engineers on it for six months and get a good working debug solution. Toolchain definitions, as I said, you want the ability to see the edit the build options, so we need to, to define those. Um, now we had some GCC based compilers where CDT already has a lot uh, in place, so we just had to enhance that. Uh, but we also had some proprietary compilers which need we needed to create definitions from scratch. So again, about two engineers for a couple of months to get all the options working. And going back to debug, 
you wanted a way to set the options for your debug session so that you can tell the debugger what the clock frequency of your device is without having to know a command line switch. Okay, so the fact that CDT provided a lot of that basic functionality reduced um, the effort we needed to spend on it and allowed us to concentrate on Renesas specific functionality. Um, so our hardware provides uh, low level hardware trace functionality. We have advanced data breakpoints. So you can set a breakpoint for when a variable is accessed and set conditions on this. And these are triggered in hardware. So there's no overhead for the application when they are not being hit. And a um, common request for embedded is real time variable access. So you can see the value of a variable while the program is running without having to stop it and without interfering with the program. And we have wanted to be able to chart that. So on the bottom left of that slide is our chart view. Shows the value of the variables changing while the program's running. And the bottom right is our trace view. Uh, we were able to develop and release the first version of vSquare Studio in about a year. Previously, we would have needed a lot more time and a lot more engineers. Uh, we had six en engineers working on eSquare Studio in total, um, just to replicate all the basic functionality, and we'd have ended up with a lot more bugs. CDT isn't perfect by any means, but it's very mature, so you, well, most all the basic functionality is there and works well enough. Okay. Uh, it wasn't all plain sailing. So one of the problems we encountered was um, the GDB and the remote protocol aren't very extensible. So we needed to be able to add our own um, hardware trace and data breakpoint functionality, as I said. And the only extension mechanism that is there by default is something GDB calls monitor commands. You, it's a single text command that just gets sent straight through GDB to the remote server it's connected to. And these are just strings. Um, so when we need to be able to send large amounts of structured data between the debugger and the IDE, such as trace data, that's not very efficient and very slow. So we implemented a second um, communications channel straight from Eclipse to the GDB server uh, to run all of our trace uh, breakpoints, profiling, and code coverage functionality over. Uh, we ended up calling this the Advanced Debugger Manager, or ADM. And thanks to the DSF system in CDT, we were able to integrate this in a way which was similar uh, for our debugger views to be able to use. So there's only one um, paradigm for accessing any of this data. Uh, we had a few issues with um, Build as well. So managed build in CDT has very good support for GCC based compilers. But it's difficult to support some features of proprietary compilers. Um, for example, for um, Benesas, our CCRX compiler has a custom syntax for embedding assembler inside C files. Um, it's the bottom left and right there. By default, with CDT, you just get a lot of compile, or you just get a lot of index errors and warnings because that clearly isn't valid C code. We needed to be able to tell the indexer this is actually valid. The problem we had was the extension points in CDT that looked like they should implement that, turned out they didn't. They'd been removed uh, for performance reasons. So we spent a long time working out how do we actually extend the parser to be able to deal with that. Um, we, have a, we have a solution eventually, but it's not ideal. There's some manual steps involved. We can't just tell CDT, use this indexer. Um, we also had the same problem for non-standard keywords. Um, luckily for those, we didn't need the indexer to understand what they did, just that they weren't errors. So we ended up just defining those as empty. So when the index sees them, it just ignores them completely. Okay. Um, now I'm going to talk a little about some of the additional Eclipse projects we ended up using. Um, Xtext, GEF, EFX Clips, Ease, among others. Okay. Um, 
So one of the requests we had um, for a long time was editing GCC linker script files um, graphically. I don't know if anyone's tried manually editing a GCC linker script file. If you're not familiar with them, then not the easiest of things to understand. Um, so we were able to use Xtext um, to create a very quick parser which could parse the um, linker script format and gave us a text-based editor with simple syntax highlighting and some level of auto-completion. But it also gave us a EMF model for that file. We were able to use this to build a graphical editor, which you could see at the top right, um, to add and remove sections, uh, set certain uh, key options, so to keep a section even though it's not referenced, for example. That um, editor, we at least are in the process of trying to contribute to the CTT project because everyone can use that. We were also, however, able to use that same EMF model with GEF. So we were then able to create a more graphical editor, which you can see at the bottom right, um, to give the user a quick and clear overview of the entire memory map of the device, what is in use, where the sections are within the memory map. Um, and because it's showing the same EMF model as the other editors, any change made in any of the three editors automatically updates the others. So if you're making a change in the graphical editor and you can't work out how to do the thing you want, but you know the syntax for the linker script itself, you can flick over to the text editor, edit it in there, flick back again, and your change will stay. Um, on the subject of graphical editing, um, customers are now beginning to expect very advanced uh, graphical ed configuration for their projects. Um, for our smart configurator uh, project, which um, simplifies the process of bundling various drivers uh, for peripherals and RTOSs, um, the, we use JavaFX and EFX clips to develop clock and pin editor views. So you've got a graphical view of the clock circuitry on the device, and all of the configuration can be done via those drop downs, which is substantially simpler than the old method of doing it. Um, for the pin editor, um, again, we can have a graphical view which exactly maps the pins on the device. So the pin layout on the device matches that exactly. And you can see at a glance what pins you have configured, what peripherals they're mapped to based on the color, and if there are any conflicts, that again shows up immediately in the graphical view. Um, JavaFX let us do that while keeping a modern look, but in keeping with the workbench. And also, it's got the flexibility that we can represent any of our device pin maps. They don't all look like that. <laughs> um, some of them have a lot more pins, some of them have a lot less, and there's a lot of variation. Um, Ease, the Eclipse advanced scripting environment, um, allowed us to satisfy a request for scripting in the IDE. Um, when we initially launched e Square Studio, we provided some support for Python scripting and GDB. But quickly, customers were wanting to be able to script other aspects of the IDE. Ease provided support for multiple scripting languages, um, Python being the main one we support, but we don't limit that. So if a customer wants to use JavaScript, they can. Ease provides that. Ease also provides a lot of the basic workbench functionality. So opening and closing projects, adding and deleting files, that's all provided by Ease itself. And it's got a very good extension mechanism for us to both provide our own modules. So at the top right, you might just be able to see, we've added a one to open a Synergy configuration editor, which is an editor similar to the Smart Configurator for graphical editing of projects. We are also able to develop um, some other functionality using Ease, which I'll now hand over to Pio to talk about. Ah, thanks, thanks, William. So my name is Pio Cho. I'm one of the engineers um, working in um, Ease Square Studio. So I want to talk about Smart Demo. So if we go back. 
uh, a bit. So if we're going to, so the, the, the problem with uh, building IDs from, for embedded systems is that the user has to do a lot of things. So the user has to set up, you know, these um, um, pins, um, mappings, and then tool chains, so all sorts of things. Uh, so traditionally what we do is we give, you know, manuals, we, we added help files to allow the user to, you know, understand which chipset is what, uh, how to set it up, how to create different sample projects. So we wanted to do that, not just by giving the documentation, but we wanted to show life inside the IDE itself. So we were looking at different, uh, different tools to do that, and we thought, okay, we could leverage SWT bot. SWT bot is used generally in testing, and we can hack that SWT bot so that we could um, show those uh, steps. So, for example, project generation for one of our projects called Synergy Projects. So it's a long process. So we can show that if the, if the user is about to, uh, user just started a, a, work, a workspace, for example. So it's smart enough to know that the user has created the workspace for the first time and a little, a little dialogue pops up saying, oh, do you want to see the demonstration? I have a demonstration to, to show you how to create a project. Okay, so then the user can click on it. Uh, a little cheat sheet comes up, and then the user can click on the start the demonstration. So I have a little video of how the... So on the, on the left is this cheat sheet when the user clicks on it, and then when the user clicks on that... Um, so, so th this is the demonstration. It shows, it highlights which, what to do. Uh, it's a bit fast because it's, in this demo, it's a bit, bus, a bit fast, but you can slow it down in the, in the script. So now it blinks. So this is all driven by SWT bot. And now it shows, the, um, it shows how to create the uh, Synergy project for the, for the user. So we then tied this SWD bot uh, environment with the scripting so that, that, so that the user can get this uh, demonstration anytime, not just inside the IDE itself. So, for example, maybe the, the support staff can create a little script and send it to the customer or the user, and then the, the, the user can run that script and see, see the demonstration itself. So, so, so obviously, SWD bot is intended for testing purposes, but we sort of leverage that for, for this demonstration uh, sort of tool. And, and some, of the to some of the scripts are g generic enough that we can feed back to SWD bot team, but at the moment, we're, we're currently using Insight East Coast Studio itself. So, next step. Mm. Okay, so it's a slightly different topic, uh, Linux debugging. So when I say Linux debugging is as, as opposed to um, debugging a bare metal uh, chipset. So, so running um, the chipset running OS, like could be Linux or could be QNS, QNX, um, et cetera. Okay, so imagine we've got, a, so this is an R card board uh, for, for sort of funds for automotive um, community. Uh, we've, got, we've got, what we've got is um, on the standard ARM core and we've got um, sort of vision processing cores. So we've got four cameras um, sort of feeding the board and, and generic ARM processor is sort of doing generic things and the graphics processing, process, well, graph vision Processing processor is is processing the feeds from the uh, uh, from the cameras. So with the standard Eclipse, we can get the ARM debugging out of the box it's quite easily. But we want to be able to debug the um, vision processing as well as the ARM. So we had to come up with additional components. So here's the here's the debugging site. Uh, the, the, the whole site where the eSquare Studio is running. We got two attached to two GDB servers. 
one for ARM, one for IMPX, because we, they're different architectures. So, so it's sort of a, a developing sort of heterogeneous environment. So here we've got an ARM uh, debugging session going on, and this um, IMPX core sort of graphics um, processing debugging session going on. So we had to do a bit of um, kernel modules to be able to uh, to be able to debug that. So the ARM debugger is sort of built in with other um, other tool uh, like Yocto toolchain comes with that. But we have to come up with the other uh, kernel modules to be able to do that. So so with this we can sort of debug sort of um, heterogeneous environments. Um, there are some additional projects that we use for debugging for Linux. Uh, we've got debug trace environment, so that allows us to um, capture how the cores are interacting. And we, this is our own Renesis IP, but we use the trace compass um, visualization, trace visualization, to that that sort of captures the trace data from the boards, and we we present it. Uh, using the trace compass visualization. But the trace compass, the problem with it, the trace compass is that it, it's an it's a offline uh, trace analysis, but we adapt it to be able to, um, to get traces during the debug session. Also, the other um, de advanced debug uh, feature that we have is called bus monitoring. It allows us to see what's going on in the bus, uh, to see the bottleneck, and, and the quality of service. So these are the IPs, these are the sub-components uh, inside the board, and we can see which, uh, which one is using which um, um, activities, really. Uh, so these are the two features that I've got. So William is going to talk about more on other features. So one of the other advantages with Eclipse is that we're not the only company who have Eclipse plugins for our tools. Um, lots of other companies do. So this allows us to integrate other partner companies' tools with our IDE. So for some device families, um, particularly ones used in automotive, uh, there are definite preferences for which compilers companies use. Um, this may be that um, either the code size is better or for automotive that the compiler has good support for functional safety requirements that they have. Um, so we had a requirement to be able to integrate these. Now, as I said, these other companies already had Eclipse plugins. So with their permission, we were able to take those plugins and bundle them with e -Squared Studio. Um, so, in that case, those customers got a good first-party debug experience from us and a good first-party compiler integration from the company who made the compiler. So, for them, they get as good of experience as they can get with both. They don't have to make do with the maybe a limited experience that a third-party IDE has with our debuggers or a limited integration we would, may have done for the party compiler. Obviously, it isn't always that simple. There can be issues with requirements for different versions of plugins, but in most cases, it was just a case of getting the plugins from the third party and putting them in. Okay. Finally, what does the future hold? So there's been a lot of talk at the last few Eclipse cons about the cloud IDE and where Eclipse as an IDE is heading. Um, Renesas are definitely very interested in the discussions around language and debugger server protocols. Uh, this seems a very good way for us to be able to allow customers to use editors and IDEs of choice while being able to provide as good an experience as we can with our own, um, almost as good an experience as we can provide with our own software. Um, it also keeps us flexible if Che isn't the next thing but the next thing supports debugger and language server protocols. Any, most of the work we have done can simply be ported. Um, we've also started investigating Eclipse J and looking at prototyping how that might work for embedded. 
um, particularly how you get a debugger connection from a cloud IDE to a device the user has on their own desk. Um, we do have some prototypes for that, um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting um, topic that we're continuing to explore. We're also committed to continuing to work with the community to develop CDT. Um, we've already contributed changes for breakpoint source mapping, linker script editor, and various vectors for managed build. And we're working on a replacement for the existing managed build system using the recently developed core build functionality in CDT. Hopefully that will help get rid of a lot of the problems that we've had integrating with managed build and keep it going for the next five, 10 years. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, please remember to evaluate the sessions. I've been told I have to put this slide in. Um, anyone got any questions? Yep. Yes. 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 In yeah. Interesting. We have that request from our own marketing people <laughs> to work with arm scatter files. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you.